So welcome all to our public presentation about the voluntary loneliness that does the man and how to revitalize interactions with the elderly. We are uh, the Viable, a group of master students from KTH, Lund and Stockholm University, Karolinska and Uppsala University. Uh, so Isha, can you tell us more about the uh, challenge? Yeah, sure. Uh, we were given the challenge by Osman City District Department, Stockholm Star, and the initial challenge says that how can we reach elderly people who are involuntarily lonely with our parental activities? How can we develop our activities to reach and attract elderly who are involuntarily lonely and who today have no contact with the preventive activities, nor are active in associations, religious communities, or similar social contacts? So why Ostama? You can see the map. The Ostermalm city is highly populated with elderly people. The density of population is really high. As well as in the statistics, in 2020, approximately 20% 20 of population, elderly population of Stockholm lived in Ostermalm, and that is subjected to increase to almost 21.2%. So the challenge has been given to us, keeping in mind the vision and the goal that Stockholm is an age-friendly city under the World Health Organization. Also, a study conducted by Alder Centrum uh, says that approximately 24% of elderly people in Ostama they feel lonely at, at least several times in a month, and 11% of them consider themselves involuntarily lonely. Now I'll hand it over to Prat. Yes, so <laughs> this is our working process for the project, starting with the interview phase and then continuing over to the design. Uh, so we define the challenge and then develop with our concepts. Uh, so the interview phase we started with to emphasize with our challenge at hand and gain a deeper understanding uh, of the problem. And yes, exactly. Uh, so we conducted surveys, observations, and interviews at Osterman and the activity centers Viljetten and Seniorjetten with staff, seniors, and um, also healthcare. Uh, act, home care actors and I'll present our key findings to you all. Uh, so from the insights that we discovered, uh, we saw that the most successful advertising is done through the local newspaper. Uh, most students that we talked to had heard about it either from their reading about it or from a friend. And then we also saw, have seen that the staff and specifically staff member Karin at the centers are very uh, important in creating and keeping an atmosphere that the seniors enjoy. Um, the service is provided by Hand Magnetic Paul and IT support Alina are also very popular um, and very important. The seniors very much like home visits by them and consider Paul also as one of a kind that we heard about a lot. Yeah, here today. <laughs> Both of them are. <laughs> Um, and they're also very important as they come in contact with seniors that the centers don't always reach. Uh, so that's an important finding. Uh, yeah, visitors primarily come for games and companionship, and they are very happy with the low prices on such as Ika and soup lunches. Um, and then we also saw that many um, talked about how they find, or some think that the centers are put too close together and would like to see more locations. Um, and they also uh, express the, how they would prefer longer, more flexible opening hours, and especially during nighttime as, or evenings, as many feel most alone uh, then. Uh, some also worried about the facilities becoming overcrowded. Uh, if awareness uh, were to increase, then they would become more popular. Uh, and we'll also, we've also seen that there is a stigma surrounding the centers and we have definitely also disconnected to an ugly home and many um, that we've talked to about living on the town have said that, uh, well, I'm not that old yet, so that's why I haven't been going. Um, yes, yeah, so after gathering this information, we continued on to redefining our challenge based on these findings. And we identified three main problems, which is lack of awareness, and that many elderly don't know about the activity centers. There's also the mental barriers, where it's hard to take the first step of leaving your home and when you don't know a lot of people at the centers, etc. And then the physical barriers, um, and sometimes hard getting around or 
similar and we've decided to focus our efforts on easing the lack of awareness and breaking the mental barriers as there are today a large amount of private uh, services around Islam that specializes in transport and physical care for women. Um, so we've been putting in most of our efforts on those two areas. Yes, and the redefine the problem or challenge statement is then how can we achieve a more age-friendly society by raising the awareness about existing support communities and by removing barriers that prevent people from joining them. And this brings us over to our concepts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we've imagined that we want to do a complete rework of how Ustamama Advocate interacts with the public. Uh, we think this would be game-changing. Um, but because it's such a complex problem, we're not talking about one generation here. We're talking 65 plus. This is two, three, four, five generations, depending on how old they are. And also because everybody is a unique individual. What interests one person is not going to interest another. What attracts one person might send somebody away. So we decided to tackle this with a multiple concept process. All of the concepts that we've looked at, after our interviews and our insights, we found out they need to be analogue, not digital. Um, the 65 plus year olds tend to not enjoy having to learn technology. They want something physical that they're familiar with. Um, our solutions also need to, need to be down to earth. We're working with government money here. We're working with fixed budgets. So they need to be implementable. This needs to be realistic, something that can be done and in control quite quickly. And finally, they need to be easy to understand because a simpler idea is theoretically easy to implement, but also a simpler idea is easy to explain to the people that you're trying to gather interest from. So seeing as we were coming up with a multiple concept angle to tackle this problem from different directions, we had to decide what directions were we going with. First, we asked ourselves, how could we bring people to the centres? And this was really the, the challenge that we were given right at the beginning. But we also asked ourselves, how could we enable bringing the centres to people? But Matt, I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> the membership programme is a long-term solution that aims to help the people take the first step. And once we achieve that, it helps them to stay motivated and come back to the centres and become a part of the society. The membership program consists of three things. The membership card, the information brochure, and the welcome box. You can take a look at your items that we give here. So the membership card, as I have it here, you can take a look on it. And as you can see, it has a coffee card, which supports to, after, after you collect nine coffees, you buy nine coffees, you get the tab for free. Uh, the activity card, when you attend nine activities, uh, then you can get the free coffee as well. Uh, and the last one, which you can see here, is like when you bring a friend in, both of you get a coffee. It's a simple idea that has been implemented like on uh, Ica shops and membership, uh, like uh, gym memberships. So it's a well known. So we got those uh, tested. We, they've been handed out for three weeks uh, at the centers and we received a really good and positive feedback uh, from the members uh, and even from the staff. Uh, one thing that they concerned was uh, the time it takes to give the stamps, uh, but that can, of course, be redesigned. The next thing is the information brochure, uh, as can be handled out as well. An information brochure is supposed to be handled out on uh, different points of contact as hospitals, shops, uh, cafes, or you name it. Um, and it's a way to introduce the Rio centers and senior centers and the staff that works here, so you guys, out to the world. It's a, it's a nice way to, that's why we put your name there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we put the, all the uh, important information about the centers, well, who we are, what we do and where we are. Um, this picture, it can be changed uh, depending on which people we want to target. Uh, maybe those look a little bit older, uh, but like 65 is new. 30, right? So <laughs> you can change the picture. Uh, and of course, some information about the uh, loyalty program. And the welcome box, uh, because a good guest never shows up empty handed. Uh, and a welcome box uh, is a way for a handyman and IT specialist to bring it with them when they go for the first time to someone's home uh, and bring it with them because it's eye catching item uh, that. As you can see here, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. That consists of uh, everything we mentioned, like uh, the information brochure, the loyalty card, and we know that you have been giving out on spikes for elderly people during winter, so why not give it as a gift as well? Thanks, Peter. So now we're coming up to our second angle of attack here, bringing the centre to people. And we're hoping there's a bit of a wow factor. <laughs> We came up with Rio Mobile. This is a I like it. converted. <laughs> this is a converted standard nine meter by three meter by more by four meter delivery truck. Um, as you can see in the images, we have completely removed one of the walls and instead replaced it with double or triple glazing slidable doors, much like you'll see on all of the pop-up restaurants all around Stockholm City. Um, the idea here is that it combats a lot of the problems. It allows you to fight the overcrowding issue that some of the current visitors have if you're not more popular by giving you more space. It allows you to hit all different areas of a stamel. And depending on the weather and how much investment, you can have seating on the inside and seating on the outside. This is actually to scale. So on a truck this size, you can fit two sofas and a coffee table or two quite comfortably with a service bar. Um, obviously, you can get a smaller version, which is about six meters. That's more of a one sofa option. Let's you get to more places, but less space. Um, stairs such as this would provide access. We're missing the railing here, just so you could actually see inside. But as well as stairs, there are portable chair lifts that we've researched into that you could bring. And also, depending on the model of truck you get, the back end of these trucks can act as either a lift or a ramp. And that is very easy for access for people to come in and out. We researched locations where this could all park. These are 17 locations, specifically around Uster Mound, that fit a truck of the nine meter length. And we cross-referenced all of the locations found with population density of 65 plus in Uster Mound. And this is what we came up with. Uh, I can give you a list of exactly where all these are later on if you would like. Not quite much time in the presentation now. But just for quick awareness and examples, just outside of Open Lab is one of these areas. Um, outside of Senor Treffen, we found a uh, suitable parking space. And if this was launched, you could do a collab with Open Lab to announce it. And more importantly, well, not more importantly, more media importantly, <laughs> shall we say, there is space outside of SPP's headquarters that you can go to, <laughs> which might be nice for local, local news. <laughs> we priced this up. Um, we're aware that because this is Stockholm Starge, your costs and requirements are different, so this is retail if we need to do this privately. But the initial cost of just this here could be as little as 160,000 sec. That includes the truck, the furniture, the conversion, and the doors. Um, optional extras, such as outdoor heating, seating, and an awning, again, not shown in the picture so you could see the truck, would come to about 10,000 sec. The mobile stair lift that I spoke about before is the cheapest one I found that is currently up to Stockholm city standards and Sweden standards, is about 30,000 sec. Now, general upkeep costs for this would obviously be staff to man it. You'd need electricity, either a generator in there or to find an aluminum box and fuel for it. You would also, the staff would need a sea license for a vehicle this large. But Matt, that sounds a bit expensive, I think, in that oh, big oh. intervention. <laughs> so let's maybe test it somehow first so that we know if the investment is worth it. We suggest testing the Rio Mobile experience outside on a stall instead at Sommargogatorna on Um uh, With the same furniture and the same design, but outdoor instead without the truck. And uh, through Stockholm Stad, Treffen Kontoret funds a project called Levan Stockholm that aims to create a more lively public space by adding design, furniture and different interventions to the streets. And here you have the possibility to apply for a spot. The perks of a collaboration like this would first be that um, it would almost be free of charge since Levan Stockholm has a budget to pay for all the furnitures. Uh, they will also then, of course, own the furnitures, but that's uh, good that it's free. Second, a collaboration with a bigger actor like this uh, would somehow maybe help to secure the implementation of it. And third, um, this could be a good way of gaining more insights whether el elderly would want to visit an area outdoors or not. 
We've chosen to suggest this test at Nybrogatan between the more busy Kalavägen and down to around Östermalms Saluhall. And uh, we took a little stroll in the area and here you see some pictures from it. And as you can see, and as we saw, uh, during lunchtime there are a lot of elderly walking around in the area, uh, in the sun, sitting on benches and being there. Uh, we believe this is because there are a lot of residentials here. Uh, they have Systembolaget, they have a lot of grocery stores and also a small stall that attracts many people. Uh, and we see that there are many 65 plus uh, seniors here that we think are not visiting the centers today. So we think it would be a good place to uh, target them. Additionally, we also found some empty spots such as the area behind Brunos Korvbar that could be um, claimed for this purpose to customize an area only for elderly. And uh, here we think, well, it is a good spot to test if the truck would be worth it. And um, we've been in contact with the ones in charge of Levande Stockholm, uh, and they are very enthusiastic about this idea, claiming that it would be a great add-on to the street life, and also, of course, to make a more age-friendly area. Um, when we discuss the process on how to apply for a spot, um, it is quite simple. Like there's no time deadline that you have to do or any specific documents that you need to fill. You simply just present the main idea and the motivation for it, the place, the design and the budget. And also of course what it will add to the street. It is more of a collaboration rather than an application. So in answer to our redefined challenge, we ended up with these two concepts. Bringing people to the centers where you have the membership program. And then we have real mobile, how to bring the centers to the people. And then you can test the real mobile at the summer streets. Uh, so overall, we strongly believe that these two concepts will help to uh, towards a more age-friendly society. And we are happy to answer any questions, both in Swedish and in English, of course. And thank you for listening.